हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर राजेश गौतम फ्रॉम डॉक्टर हरिशिंग और विश्वविद्यालय सागर मध्य प्रदेश एंड टुडे आई विल टेल यू अबाउट अ मॉड्यूल इन टाइटल थ्योरीज ऑफ एवोल्यूशन अंडर द पेपर ह्यूमन पॉपुलेशन जेनेटिक्स सो let's first we see what we are going to discuss under this module first we will know about human evolution how evolution occurred and at the end after studying this module you personally will see a conflict between scientific and religious explanations about the theory of evolution physical anthropology is concerned with all aspects of how humans came to be and how we are adapted physiologically to the external environment understanding the details of evolutionary process which is crucial therefore it is beneficial to know how the mechanics of process came to be discovered to appreciate the nature of the controversy that still surrounds the issue we need to see how social and political events influence the discovery of evolutionary principles darwin so evolution as the gradual in folding of new varieties of life from previous forms over long period of time and this is indeed one result of evolutionary process evolution is change in the frequency of alleles from one generation to next inquisitive thinkers of the ancient time as speculated about the origin of life as well as appearance of man on this earth one such speculation which is as old as human thought it commonly known as the theory of spontaneous generation of life it was believed that life originated spontaneously from inorganic compounds of the environment that exist since the formation of our planet evolutionary theory aims to explain the origin of life and all its present present variety of forms that is the whole range of individuals organism normally categorized into species genus family and kingdom it postulates the emergence of complex living organism from non living matter to by way of a such smaller number or less complex ancestors it claims that all life on earth can be traced back to one primitive organism developing spontaneously and by chance probably from a primordial soup of electrified chemicals now let us talk about the brief history of evolutionary thought the discovery of evolutionary principles first took place in western europe and was made possible by advances in scientific thinking that date back to 16th century intellectuals in cultures and in ancient greek had notions of biological evolution but never formulated them into a cohesive theory charles darwin was the first person to explain the basic mechanism of evolutionary process a 
a Scottish naturalist named Alfred Russell independently reached the conclusion like Darwin's theory of natural selection. Throughout the Middle Ages, the predominant features of the European world view was that all aspects of nature including all form of life and their relationship to one another never change. This view was partly shaped by a feudal society and was itself a hierarchical rigid class system that had not changed much for centuries. It was also influenced by an extremely powerful religious system and the teaching of Christianity were taken literally. It was generally accepted that all life on earth had been created by God exactly as it existed in the present and the belief that life forms could not change came to be known as fixity of species. Until the concept of fixity and time were fundamentally altered, it was impossible to conceive of evolutionary or evolution by means of natural selection. So, let us now be understood the precursors of theory of evolution. In this context, first we know about John Ray and his views. He was the first person to recognize that groups of plant and animals could be distinguished from other groups by their ability to mate with one another and produce offspring. Ray also recognized that species frequently shared similarities with other species and he grouped these together in a second level of classification he called the genus. He was the first to use the labels genus and species in this way and the term is still used today. Then second we know about Carolus Linnaeus. Linnaeus was standardized Ray's use of genus and species terminology and established the system of binomial nomenclature. He added two more categories class and order. Linnaeus wants to include human in his classification of animals placing in the genus Homo and species sapiens. He also believed in fixity of species. Although in later years faced with mounting evidence contrary, he came to question it. Fixity was being challenged on many fronts, especially in France, where the voices were being raised in favor of a universe based on change and in favor of biological relationship between similar species based on descent from a common ancestor. George Louis Buffon is the third thinker in the list of precursors, Buffon believed that groups of organisms migrated to new area, they gradually altered as a result of adaptation to a somewhat different environment. Buffon's recognition of external environment as an agent of change in species was important innovation. He rejected the idea that one species could give rise to another. In continuation of precursors 
theory of evolution we have erasmus darwin he in his famous work expressed his views that life had originated in the sea and that all species had descended from the common ancestor the next is jean baptiste lamarck he suggested a dynamic relationship between species and environment each such that if the external environment change the animals activity pattern would also be changed accordingly next we have thomas malthus he stated that if the human population continued to grow unchecked sooner or later there would be insufficient living space and food for everyone and argued for limiting the population growth another thinker charles lyell argued that the geological process observed in the present are the same as those that occurred in the past this theory is called uniformitarianism to understand theories of evolution we should also understand the evidences available which support the evolution in this context we have evidences from fossil records geographical distribution of living species homologous structures or homologous organs and embryology we can further understand these evidences by this diagram the fossil records which is composed of physical remains of organism geographical distribution of living species which indicates common ancestral species homologous organs or body structure which implies similar genesis and similarity in the development or similarity of embryology which implies similar genesis we have evidences of evolution from fossil records the most evidences that occurred in fossils supports evolution so fossils fossil records are good evidences of evolution today we have a far more complete understanding of the this record than was available at the time of darwin fossils are preserved remains of once living organism the fossil records shows that there is not an orderly sequence leading from one form to another several groups lived at the same time and characteristics developed at different rates therefore the human family tree suggests a long and complex past fossils from several early australopithecus species that lived between 4 million and 2 million years ago clearly demonstrate a variety of adaptation that mark the transition between ape to human prior to 4 million years ago fossil remains are scarce and incomplete where available however 
they do so a primitive combination of ape and human features most of the key characteristics that stand out as distinctly human are related to their bipedal stance you can visualize that how fossil records are useful in understanding the course of evolution see in this image at y axis there is cranial capacity of the skulls recovered from different strata of different archaic men it starts from australopithecus which merely have cranial capacity around 500 cc then australopithecus africanus then homo habilis then homo erectus homo sapiens neanderthal and homo sapiens sapiens which have cranial capacity around 1500 cubic centimeter natural selection as you know natural selection is the gradual process by which heritable biological traits become either more or less common in a populations a function of the effect of inherited traits on the differential reproductive success of organism interacting with their environment it is a key mechanism of evolution the term natural selection was popularized by charles darwin who intended it to be compared with artificial selection now more commonly referred to as selective breeding darwin realized that natural selection was the key to evolution and most of evolutionary biologist agreed the process responsible for most of the major evolutionary changes that have occurred through time natural population provides clear evidence of evolutionary change in the struggle for existence those individual with favorable variations would survive and reproduce but those with unfavorable variation would not there is images of finch a bird found in galapagos archipelago darwin observed that how environmental changes and climate create variation and how animals adapt themselves in changing environment the beak of this word finch is different in different climatic condition where they have solid seeds or seeds with hard cover their beak is strong and become gradually stronger indicates the process of natural selection and adaptation to changing environment how evolution take place to understand it let me see the mechanism of evolution there are three different mechanism by which the evolution take place mechanism 1 is known as divergent 
evolution. Second mechanism can be called convergent evolution. And third mechanism is called parallel evolution. Let us see what is divergent evolution. It is the accumulation of differences between groups which can lead to the formation of new species. Usually, a result of diffusion of the same species to different and isolated environments which block the gene flow among the distinct populations allowing differentiated fixation of characteristics through genetic drift and natural selection. Primarily, diffusion is the basis of molecular division can be seen in some higher level characters of structure and function that are readily observable in organism. For example, the vertebrate limb is one example of divergent evolution. The limbs in many different species has a common origin but has diverged somewhat in overall structure and function when isolated population of a species evolve independently. It occurs when geographic barriers separate population number or when a small group leaves an original population. The second mechanism of evolution, as I told you, is convergent, which occurs when natural selection has produced analogous adaptation in response to similar environment between different species. The mechanism of evolution can be understood by parallel evolution or the third mechanism of evolution is called parallel evolution. It is development of a similar trait in related but distinct species descending from the same ancestor but from different clades. This is a situation in more closely related lineages where several species respond similar challenges in a similar way. So, in this way we can see the mechanism of evolution which are divergent, convergent and parallel and for its further illustration there is image through which you can understand it in better way. Dear students, after knowing about mechanism of evolution, we should also know the difficulties of the theory of evolution. So, let us come to the difficulties of theory of evolution. In this context, we have lack of intermediate forms in fossil records, lack of viable mechanism for producing high level of complex and specified information. Related to this are problems with the Darwinian mechanism producing irreducibly complex feature deleterious intermediate stage. The failure of molecular biology to provide evidence for a grant tree of life. Natural selection is an extremely inefficient method of spreading traits in population unless a trait has an extremely high selection coefficient. The problem that convergent evolution appears rampant at both the genetic and morphological level. Even though under Darwinian theory this is highly unlikely. The failure of chemistry to explain 
the origin of the genetic code. Further, the failure of developmental biology to explain why vertebrate embryos diverge from the beginning of development, the failure of new Darwinian evolution to explain the biographical distribution of many species, a long history of inaccurate predictions inspired by new Darwinism regarding vestigial organ or so called junk DNA. Humans show many behavioral and cognitive traits and abilities that offer no apparent survival advantage. Tenets of evolutionary theory perpetual change a species changes from generation to generation through genetic modification. Second is common descent as we follow individual back through generation we find that we have a common ancestor. Third multiplication of species a new species develop as a result of modification of older species that become reproductively isolated. Fourth, gradualism, large difference between organism is the result of incremental changes over long periods of time. And fifth, tenets of evolutionary theory or basis of evolutionary theory is natural selection as we know each species adapts to the environment in which it lives. We can understand theory of evolution in two parts. In first part let me see the theories which were popular during 19th century. This was the theory of natural selection which acts on variation within species believe that human created in God's image or the human was created by God. Comparative anatomy under which the homologous organs which were provided evidences of evolution. Embryology also supported evolutionary theory which was popular during 19th century then classification of features are not related. Modern evolutionary theory by the beginning of the 20th century the foundation for evolutionary theory had already been developed. Darwin and Bellis had described natural selection 40 years earlier than rediscovery of Mendelian genetics in 1900, which contributed the major component, a mechanism for inheritance. For the first 30 years of 20th century, some scientists argued that Mutation was the main factor in evolution, while others emphasized natural selection. In the 1920 or in 1930s, biologists realized that mutation and natural selection weren't opposing processes and that both actually contributed to biological evolution. The two major foundation of biological sciences were thus brought together in what a scientist named Julian Huxley and called the modern synthesis theory. In 20th century perspective we define evolution as two stage process. One the production 
and redistribution of variation that is inherited differences among organism and second natural selection acting on this variation whereby inherited differences or variation among individuals differently affect their ability to successfully reproduction now let me see what are the criticism or opposition of theory of evolution as you already know almost 150 years after publication of origin of species by great scientist charles darwin the debate over evolution is far from over for the vast majority of scientists today evolution is indisputable the genetic evidence for it is solid and accumulating daily those who appreciate and understand genetic mechanism cannot avoid the conclusion that population and species evolve most criticism and denial of evolution have come from religious sources superstitious beliefs and alike minded people other than from scientific community although many religions have accepted the occurrence of evolution such as those advocating theistic evolution there are some religions believe which reject evolutionary explanation in favor of criticism they believe that deity supernaturality created the world largely in its current form the resultant us centered creation evolution controversy has been a focal point of present conflict between religion and science in 1925 banning of teaching evolution in public schools was passed in tennis creationism explain the existence of universe as the result of a sudden creation event that occurred no more than 10000 years ago they determined either to eliminate the teaching of evolution or to introduce anti evolutionary material into public school classes anti evolution feeling also remained strong among many politicians particularly those with strong support from christian fundamentalists as well as certain other indian religions so students let us summarize what we have learned in this module in the case of human evolution charles darwin noted that humans and apes share many biological features he hypothesized that human and apes share a common ancestry if this hypothesis is true then human and apes should share a high percentage of their dna and there should be fossils with human and ape like features darwin wasn't able to gather the sort of evidences to test his hypothesis in his time but many studies since then have tested this predictions both dna and fossil evidences support the hypothesis of human and ape sharing a common ancestry how do scientists study human evolution let me understood it modern science now understand that the mechanism of evolutionary changes resides in genes the basic building block of heredity 
genes determine how the body and often the behavior of an organism will develop over the course of its life. In recent decades, biological and social scientists have made impressive strides in understanding our complex and physical and cultural origin. Their research has revealed gradual alteration in our genetic structure as well as shift in culture and behavior that have transformed humankind into the planet dominant species. Scientists estimate that our human ancestor began to diverge from the African primates between 8 million and 5 million years ago. This figure is the result of studying the genetic makeup of humans and apes and then calculating approximately how long it look for those differences develop. Use similar methods of comparing genetic variation among human population around the world, it is thought that all people living today share a common genetic ancestor. So, my dear student, in this module, I told you different precursors of theory of evolution, different theories explaining how evolution occurred, what are the mechanism of evolution, difficulties faced in explaining the evolution, modern theories of evolution which include synthetic theory of evolution and in this way I lastly told you the understanding about the course of human evolution and the understanding we have developed about how human have diverged from apes and modern human evolved. Thank you very much.